Welcome back, everybody. Let's go full screen. We ain't got no time for the wasting. <clears throat> so, this is currently in draft. It's going to get released. It's full instructions on how to use the latest workflow. This is going to be a multi-function workflow, which is a new one for me. Cuts down on the size of the packs. So what we're going to be doing is the fastest face swap in Comfy UI. It's been out for a while, actually, but I thought I'd release a pack, which is going to make it a lot easier for you to use. What I've done is I've made a bunch of buttons and you can toggle each area on. So it, it, there's basically seven, what's that, seven in one. And the seventh example shows you how you can modify the rest for multi people. So anyway, let's get into it. The first one is creating the face model, which we're going to go through in a minute. Add the images, put a name, cue it, and now you've got a face model. Do that a bunch more times, and then you have face models you can blend, which you can also name. So you load your face models, blend them. You can choose uh, median, mode, or mean. And obviously you can just like blend the different faces that you created earlier. Once you've got a whole host of named faces that you're happy with, I've also got the single image swap node. Now, obviously what I'm saying is you turn them all off, you just one at a time. So when you're done with creating it, turn off when you're done with blending turn it off you know turn on the single image so only one at a time and you won't have any problems okay so in single image swap mode we choose the model that we created and we put in the target face that we want to swap and then ahead there it is it swaps for us cue the image done there's some notes here on uh, face restore visibility and code form weight, which are also things you can play with if you get a good image that you want to upscale, I've included an upscaling section so you can toggle this on alone and then check your SDXL checkpoint, check your hyper SDXL LoRa, check the prompt. There's both positive and negative. Um, it's set up for default 16 to 9. So, you know, uh, it'll go up to 4K at 16 to 9. But if you want to do portrait, you're going to have to swap those values around. There's a note right there in orange. You can just about see. And then we get to the batch fast face swap. Because it's 10 times faster when you create your face model, we can do batch operations 10 times faster, which is awesome. So there's two modes. You've got the video node and you've got the, uh, sorry, video node at the bottom. And then you've got the, um, like an MP4 or something. And then you've got at the top, you've got the directory, which would be a sequence or a, you know, because it doesn't have to be an animation sequence. It could just be a bunch of cool portraits you want to swap, right? So you can process them all in one click. That's what that is. So again, copy the path to the image, images in a directory, look, select the model and go. You'll notice there's no diffusion model here. It's just uh, GANs object detection and the face swapping stuff so it's, it's it's still ai but it's not uh running a generation like with stable diffusion okay right so choose your path face model go now there is an alternate batch sequence mode and this one uses a masked setup we'll take a closer look at that in a minute essentially what it does is it does the face swap and then it uses a mask to uh, you know, if it's partially obscured, it'll put the partially, you know, it'll put the thing back on top. Because often what happens is the face swapping will destroy what was on top. So that's that's pretty much what it's trying to do. And that's useful in animation because you might have something move in front of the character and this should restore that. That's the aim anyway. Okay. And then finally, the multi-person example where we choose two face models and we imp alter the input faces index so that we can do both people at once and that is the article so obviously i include this article for everybody so now let's get into the uh, actual video so here we have it so the first things first we're going to select enable on the face model and you'll notice that it's now enabled now i've already done this uh i've already saved this one as uh, johnson v1 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find some images and we're going to make a new one. Okay, so we've added a couple of ladies here. So I'm just going to call this one uh, Thora V1. Now, the higher quality the images, the better. 
if you want you can add another load image load there and it will create another you can add as many as you want really so we are going to queue that one up okay it's going to do the thing and then as you can see it has finished all right so that's good now we can uh, disable this one right and what i'll do is i'll enable the single image mode so we can give this one a test so here we have a bulk bulky action figure if i use the johnson model we end up with johnson on the on the model right that worked pretty good actually it fit really well so what happens when we use uh oh yeah refresh so you can see the latest one thora v1 it's going to be a bit weird because it's like a muscular body but there you go <laughs> done its best to fit it in so if we now get a more feminine source image we should be able to swap her so let's get this one we've got a sort of broody dark haired woman let's go and let's see what we get there we go it's made her a bit more like our target right okay now the things that you can play with are here the the, the face restore visibility and the code form await also you could choose to simply uh bypass that entirely so if we do it again sometimes it's actually not really needing that last step um if i just go like next look oh yeah see what i mean this actually might be a bit better but this is blending better and the hair is a little bit more defined uh, let's get another input image something a little bit harder maybe something a bit harder uh there we go we've got a blonde lady got quite a different face i think there we go so that's a photo of a woman and we're going to use our and this is a synthetic face not a photographic face when you train on photographic faces it's much better okay these are synthetic faces so just keep that in mind nothing that you can't fix later all right with something like supia right so as you can see it's changed it's gone into the direction of the target um if i was to say i liked the uh the image that we made obviously the next thing that i've done if i disable this now i can enable my supia upscale and obviously i can drop for example i could drop that image in there and i could order a upscale and then it will give us a nice sort of may as well just do it and then while it's doing that we can talk about the blending so when you have multiple faces obviously we could load in a bunch of different faces here and then we can uh choose mean median mode we can also add more faces okay so if we've got lots of the idea we want to make lots of faces first and then we can start blending them it's a little bit like the gta 5 character converter you pick your parents and then you get the son you know um it's not quite that intuitive but you can think of it like this um and it's possible to create many different um many different face models as a result so i won't bother showing you that part because it is literally just load load click and it's done all right obviously the way that you activate it disable the one you're on enable the one that you want to use choose the models choose the options that's pretty much the only options you can connect more if you want um and then q and it will save with the name that you put in all right so that's simple as now obviously the upscale is pretty self-explanatory so the next thing we're going to look at is the batch and that's a big thing because if you have an image sequence it's possible to do your image uh face swap really fast actually so um nearly finished the upscale let's just reactivate it so we can look at the difference so original image was this and the final image 
this as you can see there that yeah that fixed it that fixed it that looks obviously ai generated that is something that you could make look very real with a bit of photoshopage that's a really amazing place to start from okay so that's really nice the hair came out good too and good nice noise that's what it is it's the noise you can i hope you can see that with the compression oh and look this is see there the eye is messed up and that's what the masking deals with the mask would put the hair back over the eye uh anyway so it would look better when you upscale it if you had used the mask method but because it's more intensive i put it as its own workflow right so now what we're going to do we're going to disable the uh disable the upscale i'm going to enable that one right this is first this is the uh, batch file swap so you've got two choices you can have the video or you can have the path for images i've got a path for images right here okay and in fact we're going to use a different one let me use a different one this one's really short and it won't take long so i'm going to copy the path to my file to my images there and i'm going to choose my my image model and then i'm going to queue it and what it's going to do is it's going to do everything in one go as you can see it's already done the first frames it's done the gfp gan and it's finished and so now as you can see it's restored i mean it's swapped my ai face onto these frames now something which you might notice is that the face is much 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 more high quality than the actual source and the and the reason for this and i have put in a fix for you guys is here the reason is because the source image is super small now i've put the details in the file in the folder name so i know there's nine frames in there and they're 498 by 254 so obviously if you upscale it to you know 198 by 254 then that's going to mean that the the background is the, the the source is going to be very pixelated so what you can do is you can put it down to 512 which is closer to what it was at and then we can run it again and i'll show you the difference okay probably still going to be noticeable but it's going to be look, look see how small it is the real the issue is that the face is super high quality so consider <laughs> consider making blurry face models i know it sounds silly but it you know it's a way to make it fit with your footage because the <laughs> the problem is that the image is so good like the face is so good and well defined it's like a 4k face on a 512 um <laughs> so the problem is it's too detailed so I just wanted to show you that. Um, you mm, you might consider doing a. This is a like a, a, a like a, what I call a dumb up scale. Um, you might consider using higher quality footage. So you know, aim for at least one thousand twenty four by one thousand twenty four. Um, you know, four K footage is going to be fine, but obviously this will shrink it down. But what you're trying to do is match the pixels. The pixel density you know because here obviously you can see it's all blurry uh let's see can i just zoom in on it a bit yeah so you can see it's all blurry here and it's really sharp here so even if we were to like make it bigger it's going to pixelate really bad because it's a blurry image so the issue here is the source is the causing the source image is causing this so if we had a DVD quality uh, scene, it's not a problem. It's just going to blend in fine. Anyway, and in fact, I think I do have a higher. I've got others, but they are um, they are going to take ages because there's like hundreds and hundreds of frames. But what I can do is 
can show you one I made earlier is the image being swapped with the animation as he's walking down the corridor. Now you can mess around with the, I've gone quite hard to show that it's like, but again, what the problem again is that the focus is huge. So in all, what I would do is I'd have to blur the face myself in post. So it's like we're making it worse because it's too good. <laughs> Which is kind of funny to me anyway. All right, so that is that one. So there's no need to run the next one, but uh, if I just turn this one on here, come down. So what this one is doing is, as I said before, it's doing the face swap and then it's doing the restore face, but then it's making an image batch, taking the original image batch, which hasn't been swapped, and putting that over the top. So essentially what we're doing is uh, it's going to, it'll put things that were obscuring faces back on top. That's the best way I can explain it. So this masking helper is a new feature. Um, it may require a couple of additional nodes. I had them, but they were not downloaded correctly. So I had to go and get them manually. Okay. They were missing like the last 4%. Very strange. But um, that's that done. It's basically the exact same as the other node. It's just set up to do... Uh, you know, set up to, to, to do the masking business. And then finally, we have the multi-person example. And as I said earlier, I'm using input faces index one, and it seems to go from right to left. It used to go from left to right, but that was source faces. And those were using images. So what I think is happening is it's going the other way because it's using the image the image you know not the, not the faces to be swapped but the faces to be swapped too but regardless you can see here i've got johnson being swapped to zero which is this guy and then i've got joe thanos face being swapped to this one on the left and that is input one so it's pretty self-explanatory really um the code former is optional but i think it really helps and obviously, once I had this image, I ran it through Supia to make it look even better. So there you have it. There it is. And like I said, this thing is fast, it's super fast. Um, I've seen it processing things in, I, I don't even think I can measure it. It's, it's extremely fast. <laughs> you know, it could be telling me porky pies, but some of the, uh, some of the time, like eight seconds, that means it took one second to do the analysis, the swap, the restore, and the code former. So there was four processes done. So in 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 you know per second. So that's not that's not bad. That's not bad at all. You know, one FPS with four processing steps. That's not bad. So like I said, this is the fastest face swap in the West. And uh, it's been my pleasure to introduce it to you. You will find the workflow up on uh, my in the usual spot. There'll be a link to it from the article. There'll be a link to it from this video. It's also going to be. Uh... And I think that's everything I've got to tell you. So thanks for watching. And I will see you next time.